Hello, and welcome to the Mr. 50mm YouTube channel. I'm Chris. Some of you may have seen my first video where I ended up using some uh, Polaroid parts to build my uh, DIY medium format view camera. Uh, now, I ended up taking the bellows off that Polaroid. So, you know, without the bellows on that camera, uh, the camera wasn't really going to be cameraing. Just in case you don't remember though, it was basically one of these Polaroid land cameras. Like this one, except, you know, disassembled now. Let's put that away. So, in essence, I then had a uh, Polaroid land camera that was without a bellows and basically considered just a bunch of leftover parts. So, you know, the obvious solution was to chuck it in the trash. However, I don't really like tossing things out, so I thought, let's make this into an e-mount lens. So, in this video, I'm just going to show you what I did. Uh, and I am again referencing another video that I made. Some of you might have seen the short where I jammed my a7 III onto the back of a uh, Speed Graphic Pacemaker 23. Uh, kind of like what we're doing here, where I jammed the Olympus uh, EPL5 to the pacemaker, because I'm currently shooting on the a7 III. Uh, now you might have noticed that this particular lens board has nothing on it. We'll get into that. But in essence, what I had done in the previous video was I needed to uh, try the lens out. So I made a lens board and I jammed the Polaroid lenses in it and I didn't have a way to focus it. So I thought, well, the speed graphic has a way to focus it. I could attach the lens to the speed graphic. Uh, then I thought, well, now I need a way to easily see what's going on. And there's no shutter on the uh, lens board that I built. So I thought, I'm just gonna jam a digital camera on the back. So I made a, uh, adapter to mount a, in this case, the Micro Four Thirds camera to the back of the speed graphic. But again, I have one that I made for the Sony E-mount as well. And that's what was in the video before. Now what this basically let me do was to pop the uh, lens into the speed graphic, then use the speed graphic itself as a lens body. So I could focus the lens. Oh, definitely. Yeah, here you go, like this, with the knobs here. So you can adjust the position of the lens back and forth, and I could set the position of where things start with, with this thing where I can unlock and lock the bellows into position somewhere along the rail. Anyways, it turns out that carrying an entire medium format camera to try a uh, lens out is a, a little bit uncomfortable. It is indeed heavy and a bit clunky and overall, honestly, not the most convenient way to shoot. So I decided that I would have a shot at building my own lens body. And I decided to make it a E-mount lens body. Uh, one that I could mount the uh, Polaroid lenses to and hopefully reuse them. By the way, the uh, Polaroid lens in question is supposed to equate to roughly 114 or 118 millimeters in a focal length. So a short telephoto, if you will. Uh, but yeah, so I, I gave that a go. And uh, yeah, here is the result. Uh, it's a bit hard to see, there you go. So that is one of the elements of the uh, Polaroid lens there. The other element is uh, in back. I'm not sure if you know. can't see it. There's a lens cap there. It's hard to see, but there is a, a rear element there. It is a uh, lens doublet. It's only two elements. And a fun fact, for this particular Polaroid series that I pulled lenses off, they are uh, they're plastic lenses. Uh, so, yeah, not, not sure if that's the greatest optical material, but whatever. They work. Uh, yeah, let me, just let me show you quickly how the uh, focusing actually works. So in this setting, the way it is now, this is at infinity focus. So if you want to focus closer, 
pull up. And that gets you like kind of close. You got like, I think two feet is the focusing distance, maybe a little shorter. And I, I didn't precisely measure, but you get some range, right? You get some focusing range there by, by, doing, by doing this. So kind of intuitive, uh, relatively easy to assemble and mechanically not super complicated because I'm not a mechanical engineer. Anyways, you may have noticed when I'm holding this up, you got some weird dangly bits on the side there. And uh, this is actually my attempt at designing variable aperture. Uh, so you can see if I slide the plastic piece over, uh, different diameter holes are cut out between the lens elements. Now I chose the diameters kind of based on what uh, Polaroid had already done uh, with the LAN cameras. Uh, where the largest opening is roughly equivalent to, I think, f8.8, uh, and then stop down from there. I didn't actually choose the smallest diameter on the Polaroid, mainly because of when I tried it on the lens board, it turns out that uh, with modern cameras, you kind of hit the diffraction limit there, and it, it, it gets pretty ugly. So I selected some larger apertures, so on my uh, print there, it actually goes from f8.8 to f11 to about f16. And these are rough guesstimates, uh, just based on what I'm getting from shutter readings that appears to be fairly close. So yeah, those are uh, the aperture values I picked. And uh, I did that because uh, when I was playing around with it on the um, medium format camera, every time I wanted to change aperture, I would have to actually pop the lenses out of the lens board. Like say I wanted, uh, I had the lenses on this board I wanted to stop down, I'd need to pop the lens out, uh, switch to a lens board that had a smaller or a different opening, and then pop back in and remount the uh, whole thing onto the camera. So it was very inconvenient. Uh, so my solution to that for the uh, E-mount was to have a slidable mechanism uh, that was relatively light tight. So all this stuff is kind of sealed up with uh, felt and like foam, just like things to make it mostly light tight. It seems to have worked out. Uh, but like I said, uh, most of this stuff is sliders and things because you know I'm not a mechanical engineer, so I'm not gonna be doing fancy apertures that open and close. Uh, this just happened to be the simplest thing I could think of that uh, kind of worked. I now want to try something. So let's, play a quick game. So I'm gonna put up a couple images here and I'm gonna number them. And the game is gonna be as follows. I want you to guess which one of these or which of these photos is taken with my DIY printed lens of recycled spare parts and which one is taken by a uh, actual 100 millimeter macro lens. I'll be using either the Canon EF 2.8 or the uh, I think the Minolta 100mm f2.8. I'll use one of the macros uh, and it'll either be taken on my a7 III or on a a99. But yeah, let's see if you can pick out which, which lens came out of, or which photos came out of which lens. Uh, I'll post the answers in this description below. I think this will be pretty fun.
So if you'd actually like to know more about the, uh, the lens that I built, leave a comment down below. And uh, if enough people are interested, I'll consider doing a, a DIY guide on how to actually make a lens for yourself for e-mount by plucking off lenses from these old Polaroids. And then, you know, you can use them on whatever system you want. It's actually not super hard to make, uh, especially with the design that I kind of figured out. The push-pull stuff is fairly easy and like, you know, this is a rectangle with some cutouts in it. So not the most ridiculous thing in the world. I admit, not the prettiest, but the tube with the acrylic pieces in it worked pretty well. So, you know, there's that. But yeah, that's all I got for this video. Uh, let me know what you thought. And don't forget, as always, to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time. Bye.